Some may ask, why would you have to modify a Glock if it was perfection as they claim? Well, I'll admit that's a clever little quip, or at least it was the first time I heard it. It'd be like me asking, why should I have to replace the batteries in my pen light if Energizer's supposed to keep going and going? These things are just punchy little slogans, guys. Let's not overthink it. Honestly, it's not a gun that requires modifications. It's a matter of tailoring it to your personal tastes, and although I will say I do prefer night sights on carry guns. Some get it, some don't, but I for one enjoy messing with things and making them unique as well as functional. From knives, sheaths, holsters, guns, and just about anything else I enjoy. This is why I appreciate the AR-15, the Glock, and any other highly customizable firearm. There's countless ways to make these your own, and in this video I'll be featuring what I consider to be functional additions to your Glock. Now that we have that out of the way, the way you modify your Glock will obviously depend on what you're wanting to get out of it. I will start with some things I like to do to my carry Glocks, and then we'll address some other stuff. My modifications are different depending on, you know, whether it be a Gen 3 or Gen 4. One of the first things I do is outfit my Glock with um, a decent pair of tritium night sights. If you're playing the odds of your threat being inside of 20 feet and would like the fastest sight acquisition, I'd recommend something like the Trijicon XS247 Big Dots. If you're after a quick sight acquisition but prefer a ghost ring style sight, Ameriglow makes a great option. There's also Snake Eyes sights from Dead Ringer that uses a similar concept but uses fiber optic like light gathering polymer to aid in sight illumination. These sights are tritium as well. If you're looking for something a bit more versatile as to comfortably engage targets a bit further out, it may behoove you to stick with the more traditional three dot sighting system. There are many great options, however the best value I have found are meprolites. I would recommend getting a front sight color that contrasts the rear. One great high vis option, whether it be day or night, is the True Glow TFX. These are fiber optic and tritium, which is kind of the best of both worlds for visibility. Some also like the blackened out rear sight with the simple tritium or fiber optic front. Again, to keep focus on the front sight. And these can be used as a carry sight, but it is a more popular competition sight. If you're looking for this sort of setup, I would look into Warren Tactical. As far as grips are concerned, I will say that the Gen 4s are much better than any of the previous models, and I don't feel aftermarket grips are really necessary. As for the Gen 3s and before, it's not that the traction is horrible, but I do prefer a more substantial purchase than what the stock frame provides. I took a chance on some rubber textured decal grips from Fixer. They're nice because they're pre-cut, and you can choose to use any of the various shapes to texturize to your satisfaction. They simply adhere to the frame with a 3M like adhesive and have done well staying in place. I've also picked up skateboard deck tape that comes in large strips for you to cut out any way you'd like and adhere to the frame. This is texturing similar to sandpaper which makes for an unmatched purchase as it really locks into your hand but it falls short while carrying as the abrasive media is tough on clothes and it's a nightmare against your skin so if you carry inside the waistband an undershirt is all but mandatory. A perfect hybrid of the previous two is made by Talon Grips. This has a texture very similar to skateboard deck tape but is perfectly cut for your particular firearm so it tends to look nicer and it makes for a rock solid grip but again falls short in, in most concealed carry methods. These are also offered in a rubberized version. There are also tough grips or rubberized sleeves that slide onto the handle. However, I personally stay away from these as they tend to move around and I like to keep things as consistent as possible with defensive guns. And of course there is stippling which I think looks great and makes for a great purchase. The nice thing about this method is you can texture it to your desired taste and it can be done inside your home with a soldering iron or a wood burning kit. It does take some time and it can be tedious but it doesn't require a whole lot of skill. 
If you decide to do this at home, one thing I would do is outline your pattern with the pencil beforehand as this makes for a good point of reference and results in a more precise look. As far as mag releases are concerned, some people like aftermarket mag releases. I personally don't feel it's necessary on the Gen 4s, however I do like to add an extended mag release to the Gen 3s as I feel it's more ergonomic and easier to access. An extended slide release may be useful for those who prefer using the slide drop method. The stock lever can be tough to get a hold of, so an extended version simply has a little ledge built into it for an easier purchase. I will offer a warning to those who tend to keep their grip high. The extended version is not protected by that plastic molding and therefore can be easily touched when shooting which results in a stalled slide. In fact, I took all of mine out because of this, however, I'm going to take another run at it. Extended slide lock levers are another helpful mod for some. For those who are not familiar, these are the takedown tabs, or the tab, as in singular in this case. This is easily changed out and simply aids in the takedown process for those who have a tougher time with depressing the lever. Beaver tails can be beneficial for some shooters as well. If you're a shooter that is susceptible to slide bite, the beaver tail eliminates the possibility of this unpleasant occurrence. It is also advantageous as it allows you to get a marginally higher grip. This is especially important when trying to mitigate recoil. The grip force adapter is a good aftermarket option and comes with a couple different tails with different grip patterns. The one thing I'm not thrilled with is the fact that it only covers about half of the rear section of the grip. This kind of looks tacky as it is in no way uniform. The newer Gen 4s now come with a various beaver tail backstrap and I'm happy to see that they run the entire length of the backstrap. The grip plug is pretty self-explanatory. It's simply a plastic plug that fills the small open section in the rear of the grip. Some people claim that they use them to keep the dust and debris from accumulating during carrying. Although I suppose this is true, I personally like them as they act as a natural guide when reloading. I have noticed that a mag can get caught up in that area. The grip plug not only helps clean things up aesthetically, but is also helpful when quickly reloading. These come in all different types. You can get weighted ones, uh, you can customize them. Uh, there are all kinds of options available, but I personally prefer the plastic ones that clip right in as opposed to using screws. Pierce and Glockmeister make the kind that I'm talking about, and these usually range anywhere from about $5 to $15. Magazines and slide plates. Now, these may be a couple of the less helpful mods, but they do have a purpose. Again, for those unfamiliar with these, they are essentially customizable plates that replace your magazine base plate or your slide plate. They can help in transforming your firearm from mundane to unique. They can also be helpful for, for identification purposes. For instance, if you started having trouble with your firearm, the first thing I do is, is note the magazine. This makes it easier to distinguish one from another. In the case of the base plates, they would only be helpful if you had a large Glock collection and they were stored in such a way that the rear plate is the first thing that was seen. These usually range in price anywhere from about you know, 10 to $30. Now let's talk barrels a moment. I'll be the first to say that I'm perfectly satisfied with Glock barrels. That being said, there are times where you may want to look into aftermarket options. The first of which is if you want to convert your caliber. This cannot be done with 9mm. You need a larger caliber to convert down. You can convert down to 9mm with a simple barrel and mag swap out. With the 40, I can also use a 357 SIG barrel in the same 40 magazines uh, to shoot that caliber. If you shoot a lot, this can save you money in the long run, especially if you buy manufactured ammunition. The best value I have found for conversion barrels is Lone Wolf, however, Storm Lake and Barstow are other options. Another reason you may want to look into aftermarket barrels is if you shoot cast lead bullets as the octagonal rifling of the Glock does not stabilize them for some reason. 
Also, if you're trying to squeeze every last drop of performance out of your Glock, you can install a match or ultra match grade barrel. This will improve accuracy very slightly. In fact, I doubt it would even be noticeable to most unless you shot from a ransom rest. You can get these barrels from places like Zev Technologies, Blacklist Barrels, and many others. And lastly, if you're looking for a minor recoil reduction or perhaps wanted to attach a suppressor or compensator, you can also get threaded or ported barrels. There are many options available that will likely suit your needs. Glock is one of the best striker fire double action triggers on the market. That being said, it's nothing like a nice crisp single action trigger, so there's always room for improvement. If you're looking for a very crisp trigger but aren't looking for a weight reduction, a very cheap and effective option is the Olive One, aka a New York One Spring, and combine this with a reduced connector. The Olive One will set you back maybe $5. The most popular connector is probably a Ghost 3.5 pound connector. This costs around $10 to $15 if memory serves. Anyway, this combination results in a very crisp trigger, but may add slightly to your trigger weight. I put a 2.5 pound trigger from Zev Technologies. I don't remember the exact part number, but it was very reasonably priced and somewhere around 25 maybe 35 dollars. I would not recommend this for a carry gun, but it is an excellent option for a range gun or entry level competition shooting. Then, of course, we have the more complete high dollar options. The first of which is a fulcrum trigger from Zev Technologies. I believe this was the first fully customizable trigger of this nature. Then there's the pyramid trigger set, which is also along the same lines as the fulcrum. The biggest upside to these sort of trigger options is that they're highly customizable. They come with various trigger springs so you can easily change your trigger weight anywhere from about 2 to 6 pounds. The trigger shoe on both feel pretty nice and you can also get a smooth safety plunger and a skeletonized um, striker with um, this high end package. I don't believe these two are necessary as I believe you can achieve the same effect from a 25 cent trigger job. If I'm being honest, I don't feel these trigger systems are worth the money spent. Perhaps I just had unrealistic expectations, but I was not overly impressed with the crispness of the trigger or the trigger reset for that matter. I really don't think trigger mods are necessary in carry guns, but if it is something that you are set on, I'd be mindful that lighter trigger springs can lead to light primer strikes and other problems. Also, they may fire uh, your practice ammo just fine, but may not with your carry ammo, as some of them have notoriously harder primers, namely CCI, which would be like spear. These are some options of the main parts and modifications that I concern myself with. However, uh, this is simply the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to throw some of the more obscure mods out there just for fun. If for some odd reason you feel it necessary that your Glock shoots underwater, you may want to look into maritime spring cups. If you have a baby Glock and you don't like your pinky hanging off or simply want to add one or two rounds to any magazine, check out Glock's extended or uh, tapered base plates. Pierce also makes grip extensions. If you like the idea of lasers, Crimson Trace has been rock solid at holding zero and makes various options. You can also get lasers integrated into your guide rod. This is a nice option because it doesn't affect the form factor of your Glock. One modification that is a bit newer to me is what is referred to as the Roni. Essentially it's a polymer frame that you can put your Glock in that gives you three points of contact much like a rifle. They had something similar that required a class 3 license, however this one does not because it comes with a 16 inch barrel that fits in your pistol and then your pistol would fit into the shoulder fired device. Then of course you can sand your Glock off to get things done like you know slide melts to accommodate various objects, uh, grip reductions, professional stippling, uh, trigger guard cutouts, or have your slide cut to produce the look that you're going for. 
frankly, I could go on and on, and that's one of the great things about Glock. There's no shortage on ways to make this gun your own. If you can dream it, it can be made. Although, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with uh, most of these parts and modifications, sometimes it's just nice to get an opinion on something you may not be familiar with. That being said, I hope this video was either helpful or entertaining at the least. As always, you guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave your mark in the comments section. If you would like to, feel free to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, all of that. Anyway, until next time, this is Chase Pelagi, signing off.